I updated the Epic Kodo mounts. Most popular request since I started my channel. Well, today's the day, my friends. I finished with Blizzard started and updated the Epic Kodo mount. Since the slow versions did get a fix. I, I'm very glad to see this. Because I think the Epic Kodo mounts used to look so fucking cool. And Blizzard just one day decided to give up on them. Up, I went ahead and used those as a base, similar to how I approached Kodo. the Nightsavers. In an attempt to be efficient, I modeled one of the armor plates first and used this as a base for the rest of them. I count myself fortunate for the fact that Blizzard were forced to reuse a tiny patch of texture for almost the entire armor, because this meant that it was made with a lot of copy pasting of the same basic design. After oh, all, yeah, I'm not surprised. This was 2004. Trek 2 was mm -hmm. conquering the West. The West was conquering Iraq. The UK had just outlawed fox hunting. And games had to be developed to essentially be able to run on a TI-84. Had things yeah. been different, I might have needed to model all these armor pieces uniquely. Which would have taken me- I used to actually be able to run Doom on my TI-84 back in uh, high school. A ton of time. Time I would rather invest into parts of the model that present the bigger mm -hmm. challenge. Excited to betray my faction, I worked my way yes. through the armor plates. Unlike the original, I'm using separate plates for all the armor, rather than mesh together ones. That's this always brings smart. the risk of clipping issues with it, so I tried mm -hmm. my best to keep that in mind and space them out a bit at the edges. You inevitably okay. run into some issues, but it's often a matter of just making it work when you rig it, so I wasn't too worried. Mm -hmm. For every remake, I commit the sin of the modern day artist, and look for ways in which I can improve classic art made by somebody far superior to me. Well, one of the crimes I committed was Sounds bastardizing right. the leg armor. The original is wearing these fun little slippers. I made it into something more bad already, but less fun little slipper. Let's be honest. That doesn't look good. Like, yeah, it doesn't. He, he's right about that. Yeah, the armor wasn't the challenging part of this model. The challenging part of this model? Well... We'll get to that when the time comes. Okay. But so far, it was pretty smooth sailing for me and my Kodo friend. Mm -hmm. Minor oddity. The horns of the Epic version are completely different in design to literally every other Kodo in the game. I would love to be able to tell you why this is. It's one of those things in WoW art that you just have to accept. I remodeled the horns and unwrapped the texture of the new horn onto okay. the texture of the previous horn. That I managed sense. to make it work perfectly. Which was nice, because fuck painting the horns myself. The wind in my back and confidence in my brain, is, it was time for the head. This doesn't it seem that bad. It was far the most intricate part of yeah. the whole thing. And in contrast to the rest of the model, I couldn't use any copy pasting here. As always, oh. it was important to me to have it resemble the original. So I made sure to get the design right. God the plates damn. are all very closely stacked together. And I knew I would risk making it look way yeah, too it's like busy. A rhino. And I would just have to figure that out when I texture it. If it really turned out that I fucked myself on the model, I could always go back and change mm -hmm. it. By the way, quick question for you folks. I was wondering if I should make these videos longer and show more of the process or not. Due to viewer attention, I'm a little bit scared. But at the same time, I feel like it's more interesting to watch the footage when it doesn't jump around so- I think that it's- maybe you can make them like two or three minutes longer, but I think having shorter videos is better. Randomly, it shows a more complete process. I have yeah. many, many hours of footage to edit down for every video, which is tight. So yeah, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. And yes, no worries. I did later shorten the snout so it didn't look like a goddamn parrot. Having modeled my head Excellent. for now though, it was time to make the change. Now, if these mounts had just used leather straps like the Brewfest Coder does, mm -hmm. that would have been lovely. But it doesn't. Of course not. Because it has chains. Chains are Which one of those cool. annoying things in 3D art. There's three main ways of doing chains. 2D, okay. like the boys did in 04, yes. semi-3D, and fully 3D. In other words, Makes they sense. either use a fuck ton of polys or look like garbage. There's no in-between on well, this they had one. It look like it's garbage. a binary choice, and no matter which one you pick, someone is gonna have reason to be mad at you. Yeah, I only course. had one real option. My approach to the chains was to model a single link, texture unwrap it, and then copy-paste it. Okay. Having already unwrapped before duplicating, that looks good. the texture layout of the links would be identical. Yeah, I think that fits together that I really could well. copy-paste the texture of one link very easily to all the other ones, and it would fit perfectly. For the bolts, uh -huh. or rivets or whatever, I was gonna yeah. do the same thing. Seeing as these videos take a ton of work as it is, it is crucial that I'm time efficient. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I forgot to spend 4 seconds to texture unwrap my initial chain link before duplicating it 50 times, so that I had to spend an hour afterwards manually unwrapping every single link and stacking up all the UVs in order to get the same simple result. Holy Tip for your blender, fuck. folks. If you want to stack up UVs, just unwrap them all, scale on individual origins times a thousand, and switch the medium point, and scale to 0 0.001. Rotate the ones that are rotated, done. You okay, yeah, I'll, I'll remember that. Super things down below. Yeah, or this okay. is more obvious than I think it is, and I look like an idiot now. Sure. Anyway, next, the UV unwrap the armor and the drum. So, basically everything. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm not going to spend much time on this one, because I respect my audience and their happiness. Which is why I'm also not going to spend much time on the next part, rigging. Okay. I will voice one piece of discontent, though. 
Wow, Ricks sometimes have tiny little fucky hidden bones that you don't see. Which means oh. that for some reason, your model behaves weird, and you spend half an hour looking for which bone that part of your model is unintentionally rigged to, only to realize you couldn't find the bone because it's 3 centimeters long. A problem that also plagues me in real life. Rigged and ready, we all know what comes next. Remember when I teach you about the challenging part? All right, well, let's see we it. made it this far, my friends. The colors? For this model, I did the thing so universally torturous it makes you wish the Y2K bug happened. I'll learn a new program. That's As some of you know, I embarrassed myself for the past few months by painting my textures in Substance Painter. Substance Painter is a great program for many reasons. Hand painting is not one of them. So I switched to 3D coat like a good boy. I dropped my 95 euros on the license, spent, not kidding, Two hours re-importing my model to try and figure out why it keeps coming out all fucky and embarked on my fun learning experience. The tools were, honestly, decently intuitive. It took me a while to find out I could color pick with V. The freeze okay. tools confused me somewhat, as well as how to polygon select. But I was trucking. The real challenge here was that my entire approach to painting textures was about to change. Rather than my abortion of a workflow that I clobbered together in Substance Painter using fill layers, painting in layer masks and zero color picking, Yes, that's what I did. I instead adopted a workflow proper texture artists use when they hand paint. It's actually crazy how much that he can make it look like it's 3D with just changing the colors. Like at the beginning, it looked like shit. And like now that he's like changing the colors to like different angles, it looks so much fucking better. I knew that working in this new approach would bring a bunch of new challenges for me, but I also knew that I could potentially reach far better results with it. However, I currently have quite limited time for videos, and I couldn't exactly afford fucking it up and being left with an inadequate end result. Makes but, sense. however tricky a new set of tools can sometimes be, I handled it like the fashion industry does with a small child. I made it work. I laid a base of simple values for my model, after which I started blocking out the details. Something that I noticed in Blizzard's new Kodo models is that they change the pattern of the skin quite a bit, joke. making it less elephanty and more I'll, I'll bumpy. Keep that to myself. This is where I usually get a bunch of comments saying, Tom, you should remake the Kodo with the original skin pattern. Mm -hmm. I'm not remaking the whole Kodo just to change the skin pattern, guys. So far, I was surprised how well it was actually going. Yeah, I picked this up looks the tools great. pretty quick, and I was already doing far better Holy than it was shit. in Substance Painter. Like you saw earlier, I decided to give every chain link and bolt its own space in the texture. This is a crime against optimization, because if I had instead stacked them up in the same texture space, I could fit it into the texture file of the armor, and I could save myself a draw call. However, it would take about two minutes to revert this decision if I ever wanted to, and my current approach would allow me to draw highlights onto the links separately. The drum okay. was a pickle. In all honesty, the drum you see me texture here was originally a quick concept version that I threw together to try out a design, which I just ended up rolling with when I was texture unwrapping the model. The design I feel like Blizzard, like at the end of this, they should just be like, all right, send it to us. And then he sends it to Blizzard, and then next thing you know, you log in, and this is the way the Kodos look in the game now. Yep, it's just like, all right, but not even you're hired. Just be like, hey, can we can we look at this? Can we just, I, we just want to take a look at the, uh, just so we can see, you know, what it looks like. And I'm like, okay, all right, good. Right, put it in the game now. All right, that's it. I did something more yeah, to thanks. be finished. It just didn't really look like a war drum to me. Yeah, I'm adding storm a out. metal brace to the bottom and put some rivets around the edges. I figured it would probably do a lot to help the design. For now, however, I just gave it some basic shading and groundwork to come back to later. Having painted in a rough base for my drum, I went on to the rivets, okay. or bolts, or whatever they are. Similar story to the chains. I just textured one of them, went into Photoshop, exported my texture layout as a PNG, and and copy pasted right? like I was developing Towns yeah. in New World. My rivets all ready, Wait. I went on to continue painting, copy pasted like I was developing Towns in New World. My rivets all ready, I went on to continue painting some more levels of I mean, it was pretty bad on the release. I mean, we all know this detail into the armor. I drew in some soft highlights to break up the surface of the metal a little bit. One thing to keep in mind is that this armor was forged by a Tauren. I would give him a pass if there's a minor imperfection or two in the execution of it. Yeah, of okay? course. These people have three fingers and their houses are made of dead animals. After all these They're years, stupid. I never bothered to learn much about the lore behind these creatures, so I decided it would be fitting to have a look at the wiki. Kodos are massive reptiles with hardly visible scales. Bullshit. Wild Kodos are normally herbivorous. <laughs> herb 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 vegan. Wild Kodos are normally vegan. I will not attack them as threatened. Okay. In the waning years of their lives, Kodos instinctively track to the Kodo graveyard in the center of Kalimdor, where they spend their last hours. While Kodos are generally considered gentle by nature, they're fierce opponents when threatened, and have occasionally been known to devour their enemies whole. Jesus Christ. 
The Green, Great Brown, Great Grey, Thunderbluff, and Great Golden Kodos were considered to be alpha members of the Hertz and Decilus. Okay. A Kodo can eat its own weight in grass each day, but a lot comes what out the, the other end. I don't know who wrote this lore, but they should have written Shadowlands. I decided that rather than fixing it, I was going to ditch my old drums and go back to the source material once more. Bit of a trend there. I hadn't really put enough thought into the way I was doing them, and I didn't really feel like they were going anywhere. Changing my direction once more, I wasn't going to make an exact copy of the originals, mm -hmm. I was going to simply incorporate the most prominent features of the originals into what I already had, making okay. a hybrid of sorts. Every video I do, I end up going back to the source material. It's just hard to argue with it. With my I think that looks really good. As I said, like I feel like the the rescaling of these models and the way they're designed is actually very impressive to me. Like I'm surprised that it's this good. My drum a remade, exactly. I went and laid down the last highlights. Some bits and some bobs, the way it goes. I was worried that learning new software and a new workflow would fuck with me too much, but in the end, I'm more than pleased with the result that I ended up getting. Before the reveal, yeah, I want to make good. a quick point though. Like many of you, I like the meme on Blizzard. It's fun, yeah. and I wish that they would change some of their priorities. I know that a lot of you share that sentiment. However, with all my memeing, I want to make one thing clear. Mm -hmm. The problem is not with the artists at Blizzard. If anything, their work has been consistently awesome through even the darkest days of the game. As an artist, you do not decide what you make. Your higher-ups do. And in Blizzard's defense, for every warglaive there are 19 variants of barrel, wooden fences, and a pile of ogre shit in Tanaris. All that stuff needs to be made. I feel like most artists at Blizzard would probably be stoked to remake an old classic like the Epic Kodo mount. And trust me, they would do an infinitely better job than me. Not their call though. Saw a few people- Yeah, I, I would love to see that. I mean, if they re went back and redid a lot of the old stuff, that's what was kind of cool about BFA is that some of, like, you know, we got the new uh, faction armor. We got the Night Elf armor with the Dark Shore Warfront. Yeah, I was really excited about that. I think that whenever they add the human and the orc heritage armor, it should be the Grand Marshal set. Just a completely upscaled version of the Swifty Grand Marshal set. And I'll be happy if they do that. People take out anger on the art team. However, if you're upset about some of Blizzard's choices and want to vent your frustration, the right place to direct your anger is their Twitter interns. And with that, we, my friends, approach the final hour. But first, if you're liking what you're seeing, you would help me out a ton if you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and drop the like on the video. And comment. Also comment. These videos take a ton of work to make, and nothing motivates me more than seeing that people are excited about my content. And sorry that this video took a while. I'm in over my tits with my thesis. And with all that said, my good people, all right, gentlemen, I'm proud to unveil. So that's what it looked like before. Okay, this is the original Kodo from 2001. The legendary, the spicy, the ever popularly requested, new and updated, epic Kodo mount. I don't see it. Where is it? Oh. Uh, this is awkward. Oh my god! Holy shit! That's a big boy! God damn! Look at that! Oh, with the different colors and everything! Oh my god! Yeah, he's a chonker. It's insane looking, yeah. That is fucking ridiculous, man. Oh, that is so cool. There's no way, did he do a Brewfest one? God, those fit together so well. Holy shit, that is good. The great white Kodo. I remember I always thought this is the coolest one. All right, is there any other ones? Oh, the black, oh, the war one. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Oh, with the horde on the top of the saddle. That is really fucking cool, man. Holy shit, that's badass. Seeing the work go into this stuff, uh, gives people a good idea why original store items are worth, can be worth some money, which fresh design. The shame artists don't get more recognition, though. I feel like everybody acknowledges that Blizzard's art is really good. I, I don't think it's as uncommon as you might think that people feel that way. Yeah, I'll definitely link you guys the video, okay? Yeah, this well, is... Well... What? All right, anyway. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times people are positive about it. It's like anytime people are mad about what some Blizzard developer is saying or something like that, it's never one of the artists. 
Think about that. Yeah, they're working. Uh, they put a good amount of time into this shit. This looks fucking amazing. I would love to see them upscale, like hire some of these people and actually put these models in the game because I just think this is fucking amazing, man. Like, I love seeing this kind of stuff. That guy's good as fuck. It's like, what's so crazy to me about it is that he's able to make it look 3D just by painting it. That's what I think is so shocking. Except for modern zone layouts. Some of them aren't ideal, but, you know, some of them are. You now, some the technical stuff. I mean, this Kodo has 20 times more polygons than the original one, which affects performance. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. It, it does affect performance, but there's plenty of other very complex mounts in the game, too. So it's hard for me to say that's anything that's unique. But, yeah, this looks fucking badass. And, yeah, Tom Keck, I would absolutely recommend. You know, give him a like, give him a sub. Uh, these videos are fucking amazing, man.